Welcome to episode 33 of Discovering Nagasaki from a Local. My name is Chad. In my ongoing weekly vlogs, you can experience everyday life in this scenic and fascinating part of Japan. This week only Daniel Hazen was able to correctly answer both of last week's vlog questions. Thank you for answering these challenging questions. Uh, the first question from last week was, how many triangular shaped sections of konyaku did I put into my batch of Odin? The answer is 12 sections of konyaku. The second question from last week was, what was the color of the car used by the monks at Honkyoji Temple? The answer is black. During the past week, the first signs of spring appeared in Nagasaki. Here in Amora, two types of cherry blossoms started to bloom. The first type is the Kawazu Sakura from Shizuoka Prefecture. Their blossoms have a darker shade of pink and sakurambo, fruit-bearing cherry trees. Their blossoms have a lighter and more common shade of pink. And now for this week's crash course in kanji root particles. Group T kanji root particles include volcano, roof, between, remain, metal, barn, eat, command, now, fit, check, conversion, logic, eight, public, run out, valley, and stool. I will cover group U kanji root particles next week. Anyone who has an interest in Japanese food, fine arts, or martial arts will benefit from a basic knowledge of kanji. Please support this vlog channel by clicking on the subscribe button below, ringing the adjacent bell for update and notifications, and clicking the thumbs up button. In today's vlog, I will show you how to bake a popular type of organic bun, yomogi pan. I will also show you the Ariaki Dam Kantaku Museum in Isahaya. Let's get started. To make 33 organic yamogi buns, I'll use the following ingredients. 70 grams of sugar. 11 grams of salt. 22 grams of skim milk powder. 24 grams of butter. 70 grams of organic yeast. 70 grams of boiled and grated yamogi from our garden. Mugwort, not exactly an appetizing name in English. 760 grams of flour and 260 grams of water. After eight minutes in the mixer, I will let the yeast rise at room temperature until it fills this container. This is what the dough for the bread looks like just prior to forming. Now I have to cut and weigh this dough. For these buns, I have to weigh out 38 gram portions of this dough using a digital scale and a dough scraper. Now that I have 33 and a half dough portions, the next step is to form the dough into small buns that have a smooth and unblemished surface on top. I do this by pressing the dough flat and pinching off the edges on the bottom section of the bun, just like this. Then I place the dough on a silicone sheet with the smooth surface on top. Now the 33 and a half dough sections are ready to put into the proofer. First I'll spray the dough with some water. This dough will rise for a second time in this proofer for about two hours. You can see that there is a lot of other bread in the proofer right now. We make a lot of bread every Wednesday.
After two hours in the prover, these dough portions have grown substantially. Before I put this tray into the oven though, I need to spray some water on this dough. This will help the buns to brown evenly. This tray will spend about 18 minutes in the oven at 115 degrees Celsius. I'll just press the timer and wait until they're ready. And now the yamogi buns are hot and ready to take out of the oven. This time it only took 16 minutes for these buns to brown. These buns look good and they're delicious. I'll let them cool down and then transfer them to a cooling rack. I've already put five of these yamogi buns into a plastic bag. After this, I'll put one of these Yumogi Pan labels on the bag before I deliver them to the market. Today, my wife and I also bake seven other types of bread, including honey buns, pumpkin buns, fruit buns, oatmeal cookies, cinnamon rolls, plain country bread, and walnut rye bread. We bake about 60 different types of bread, and fortunately, they're still in demand. now at the entrance to Kantaku no Sato Park near Isahaya. This park is a popular spot for locals and tourists alike. This is a large guide map in front of the park gate. Among many attractions here, you'll find a museum, a small aquarium, and a small petting zoo. The yellow and pink cartoon characters on this sign are Mutsukuro, air-breathing mudskipper fish that live in Ariake Bay. Don't they look cute? It's a large and interesting park, but today I'm only going to show you around that large building on my right with the red roof, the Kantaku no Sato Museum or Hakubutsukan. On this side of the park next to the souvenir grocery store is an interesting museum that has farming and cultural displays, as well as displays concerning the controversial dam that was built near this venue 23 years ago. This large model ahead displays a seven kilometer long dam that since 1997 has split Ariaki Bay from the sea. The dam wall and road was built to reclaim 820 hectares of farmland on the left and protect Isahaya from flooding from the sea. Japan's Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fishing completed this dam at a reported cost of 235 billion yen, a rather large investment. Here you can see some of the dam construction models on display here in the museum. Since this dam opened, there has been a legal conflict between local fishermen and farmers who settled in the reclaimed area. The fishermen claim that the dam has changed the flow of sea currents and damaged their shellfish and seaweed hulls. Farmers are opposed to opening the dam gates because the incoming seawater would ruin their farmland. This model in the corner shows the concrete superstructure which supports the road across Aoyaki Bay. On this side of the museum, you can see a large collection of artifacts that local farmers and fishermen used here in the past. Here are two displays of thatched goza mats made from rice hay. In the corner is a lever-operated mochi machine and various farming tools on the wall. This antique machine was used to make rope from rice hay, and next to this mannequin is a foot-operated rice thrasher and various types of barrels. On the other side of this door are some antique rice sifters, polishers, a cargo scale, boxes for transferring and measuring rice, wickerware, a sewing machine, a dresser, and various containers for storing foods and liquids. A 
As I go around this corner up ahead, you can briefly see a typical mochi bowl and mallet. Here they are. On my right, you can see a variety of fishing artifacts, such as net-making machines, rakes, cages, buoys, nets, and a small boat. Over in the corner here, you can see some more nets, cages, and wooden toboggans. As it turns out, these toboggans were used to support fishermen as they fish for mudskippers in the muddy wetlands of Araki Bay. This display shows a mudskipper fisherman in action. On this stand over here is a variety of antique houseware on display. Finally, in this section over here, there is a variety of antique farm equipment, such as rice polishers, rakes, weeders, harnesses, harvesters, hoes, plows, levered straw cutters, and behind me, a foot-operated water wheel. And now for this week's challenging questions. First, what is the brand name of the blue mixer in today's baking demo? Second, what were the toboggans in the Kantaku Museum used for? Be the first to correctly answer both of these questions in the comment section below. I will announce the first three people who do so at the beginning of episode 34. You can find a complete list of the contents of my vlog episodes on the Facebook link listed below. And you can watch all of my vlog episodes on the online YouTube playlist. Today's B-roll involved baking, so in episode 34, my B-roll will involve farming. See you next week.